In this episode, I answer one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of your questions. You can have it. World famous photographer Chase Jarvis. That's right, friends. This is a hashtag Hey Chase episode. And if you didn't know what's going on, uh, hashtag Hey Chase, that's how I can search the internet and track down any questions that you ask me. So if you want to get your questions answered, just go hashtag Hey Chase and I'll track them down. For times like this, when I'm at the cabin, it's very, very cold outside. In case you missed it, I was just swimming. I, I Facebook live that sucker and I had a little Q&A before. There's a bunch of questions left over. If you want to see me do things like Facebook Live, all you have to do is uh, like follow me on Facebook, duh. Um, in the meantime, I've got, as promised, 10 questions of yours that I'm gonna answer in the next 10 minutes or less. Ready, go. Hey Chase, can you advise, should one specialize at the early stage of photography or should the goal be diversifying? I would do two things. One, I would focus specifically on what it is that I wanna be. What do I wanna get take pictures of? What do I wanna get paid to take pictures of? That's what I would focus on. That'd be my primary focus. I would create a portfolio in that world with my own time and my own money such that when people wanted to hire me, I can show them the work either on my website or in person or all the ways you can show work that you actually wanna get paid to do and then that's what you're gonna get hired for qualifier other gigs will come your way that you can make money off of now I've never shot a wedding in my life but I know this from a lot of photographers who are, are getting a commercial or editorial or portrait that every once in a while someone will say hey man can you um, shoot my wedding here's what I would do when you're trying to make it in photography if you can get paid to take pictures I would consider taking that gig if it's not gonna be a huge distraction from the thing that you care most about. If it is a huge distraction, then don't do it. If you could use the money, which most aspiring upstart photographers could, then take the gig. Just don't then start advertising yourself as a wedding photographer, because that unquestionably is a distraction. All right, good question, JP Crouch. Next one, hey Chase, can creativity be taught or is it something that you have are? Now, absolutely 100% creativity is inside of every single person. Creativity is, in fact, what differentiates us from a lot of the other species on the planet. We can put unlikely things together to create something new. That's what creativity is. Now, creativity is a habit. Creativity is a way of thinking. It's a way of behaving in the world. And if you think that creativity just happened, like this one person who's really creative, they, they actively create on a regular basis, daily, I would bet. Um, and they think about that. They think about how to put themselves in, giving themselves an opportunity to create something, to, to put, again, unlikely things together, to form something new. Ideally, that new thing is useful. Question three is from Samuel Ryan. Samuel, do you ever invoke lucid dreams to enhance your creative way of thinking? I think lucid dreaming is fascinating. I have spent time teaching myself to lucid dream. But like most things, lucid dreaming requires effort. It requires practice. When I have been at my best, I've been able to lucid dream and experience things like flying at will. However, I have never used those things for creativity specifically. All right, the next question is from Richo Lund Hall. When did you feel that your career was onto something? And I actually parenthesed this because I got another one from Darren Valentine and said, when did you finally realize you'd arrived? I have never arrived. If by arriving you mean I feel complete in my work as a creative or as a human for that matter, um, I have never arrived. I will always be on a quest of learning more, bettering myself and trying to add value to the world. So if you mean by arrived or by uh, my career was successful, it, that is a moving target at all times. My first goal was to be able to make some money instead of no money. And then when I did that, my next goal was to be able to provide for, uh, to provide th that as a career, as as be able to say, this is my profession 100%. And then it was to be able to provide a, a lot of value for my family. And in this case, um, provide enough, you know, food and money that my wife, Kate, could go back to graduate school to become 
um, extra smarter, which she already did, and she's got more degrees than you can shake a stick at. Um, and then it was to be able to provide enough money to create extra resources to be able to uh, what I consider like cr create my photo studio as an incubator where we're incubating ideas around photo apps and ideas like the the uh, best camera and creative live for example uh, and and on and on and on so my goals have continued to change I have never arrived um, and I don't think I ever will so uh, take that Tanya Gale greetings from Chili Philly where what are your best practices for getting a project off the ground by getting a project off the ground that can mean so many things i'm just going to assume that it requires other people to to have it deemed a success because you can have a great personal project that doesn't need any outside input to get off the ground and that could be you know you're going to shoot uh, 365 portraits in 365 days that doesn't need anybody's sort of authority or buy-in that's just you and 365 subjects so again i'm going to assume that you mean getting other people interested and by getting other people interested i would go all in and when ideas start to germinate then you pour extra gas on them rally around it bring in extra resources friends thoughts effort whatever you can to continue to make that thing take off this one's from Sally Mitchell. What's the tipping point when a harebrained idea becomes a project you start? A tipping point is something that I feel like um, you know. If you're wondering if your idea is taken off or not, it probably hasn't. Usually other people will tell you that, oh my God, that idea you're doing, that's freaking incredible and you should do more of it. So uh, it's, usually, it's usually pretty obvious, but when that idea becomes something that gets gravitas, that starts to, to get groundswell, you will know it. Other people will be asking you about it. And your goal is to get as the entrepreneur or the artist or the self-starter to get from zero to one, from nothing to something, and then you sniff around and see if that something has, tra has traction. And you will know. If it's ambiguous if this has traction or not, it doesn't. Phil Stedman asks, do you think film has a future? Film's future is very... Um, it's very small and very esoteric in the same way that oil paints still has a future in society. Um, oil painting is still valued. However, it's valued by a very, very small subset of people. It still adds value to the world. And the way that film adds value is in, I feel like, for early photographers to feel what it takes, what, what, what the mindset that you need to be in to take a great picture instead of just spraying and praying. You've heard that mantra on the internet. So... I feel like that is the primary value because most of the looks of film can be replicated digitally uh, that even a, a professional eye cannot detect. So I don't think the, the value of film is in the final output. I think it's in the input and what the photographer thinks of when they're shooting. Jerome Cox asks how to get from semi-pro to pro. Anyone can get lucky once with a big commission, but what it takes is it takes repeating that over and over and over. So the gap from semi-pro to pro, I feel like, has a lot to do with how much effort you are willing to pour in, not when things, not, not when you get a break, but before you get a break. That's when you're working hard, such that when you do get that break, you've got this momentum that you've got a huge, huge head of steam, such that what you... Um, the, the work that you put in becomes disproportionately valuable on the other side of each individual transaction. The more stories that you have to tell about being hired in the past will help you build clients going forward. So there's a great um, episode of Chase Jarvis Live with myself and Ramit Sethi, who um, he talks about managing, managing um, the expectations of clients and actually landing folks that can help you derive long-term uh, value and build a career instead of just a one-off. So check that out. It's a quite quite a powerful episode. This one is from Shane Mullen. Shane asks, how many days a week do you have off? Ha, ha, ha. That's very funny. I have zero days off. And I have zero days off as a rule of thumb, but I take days when I need to recover. So... I don't look at my career, my job as there's life and then there's my job. I find I spent a lot of time and energy putting those two things together in what I thought was a very meaningful uh, way, in a way which those two things could jive with well with one another. 
So that's not to say that I don't take time away. For right example, this is a perfect example. I am at our cabin. Am I working today? I, I don't know. I had nine hours of sleep. I went, woke up and went for a walk with Kate. I went swimming. And yet it's Sunday and here I am at uh, 4.30 p.m. and I'm recording a video for you. So I do not have regulated days off, but I do value stepping away from work to recharge. I just like to do that quickly because I love what I do. Okay, the last question is from Courtney Zarizef, which is, what is your strategy for good networking? My strategy is that networking is not a thing. It's not work that has to be put in. It's not a grind that you have to go through. Networking should be meaningful relationships where you meet people, you try and add value to their life, and in exchange for you being awesome and open and available, people will want to add value to yours. So I'm gonna wrap it up. There's a great class of with Ramit doing Money for Creatives. I may have recommended this in an earlier episode of CJ Raw, but I think it's a dope one. It tells pure sort of creative artist types how to think more like entrepreneurs. Go check them out. And again, if you want your questions answered in this show, it's very, very easy. You can fire away hashtag HeyChase and I will answer those in some upcoming episode. Signing off because it's getting dark. It's now 4.33 here in Seattle, and I got work to do. Talk to you soon, have a great one, bye-bye.